Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, a new poll from the Wall Street Journal underscores how even the mainstream press can no longer deny that Biden's age is a significant and legitimate issue for voters. Three quarters of American voters believe he is too old, and that includes a large majority of Democrats. And as we discussed on Tuesday, according to life expectancy charts for white men, there is quite a significant chance that he could actually die in office. As I said, that's worth considering. But the truth is, Biden's age isn't actually his biggest liability. Now, as always, it's the economy, stupid. It's the future promise of Bidenomics versus a current reality of struggle. And if he loses to Trump, it will have more to do with the proverbial kitchen table than with the actuarial tables. So let's dig into the actual Biden economic record, the failures, the wins, and why Americans are not feeling the Bidenomics love. The TLDR is this. The economic story of the Biden administration, as experienced by regular people, has been price spikes coupled with a stripping away of all the pandemic programs, which actually did help them survive. This chart here from the lever shows all of the pandemic social safety net and how piece by piece it was allowed to expire, massively shrinking the social safety net for ordinary Americans. Now, for many people, these programs instituted by both Trump and Biden actually really improved their financial situation during the COVID crisis. Take a look at this chart of credit card debt. Pandemic programs led to a historic reduction in personal debt during 2020 and 2021. But as those programs have been stripped away and inflation started to bite and the Fed hiked interest rates, Americans were quickly forced to rack back up new record levels of credit card debt, which has now surpassed pre-pandemic levels. Now, the original idea of the Biden administration was to permanently expand the social safety net to bring it more in line with its other developed world peers. That was the basic concept of, quote, build back better, to couple long-term investments in a green transition industrial policy with tangible, immediate benefits for Americans, things like affordable child care, permanent child tax credit, huge investments in affordable housing, and a large expansion of health care. But this effort collapsed as Washington bought wholesale into what we now know was an incorrect analysis by permanently wrong economists of the causes of inflation. In the face of massive supply chain disruptions and what is by now a widely accepted phenomenon of corporate price gouging, these economists pointed to the little bit of money in regular Americans' bank accounts as the sole driver of inflation. And basically, Biden and the Democrats bought it running like scared children away from the part of their agenda that actually would have helped ordinary people in immediate, tangible ways. The collapse of Build Back Better roughly coincided with a messy Afghan withdrawal, which was 100% the right thing to do, but led to uniform condemnation of the Biden administration across media outlets. With this one-two punch, Biden's once impressive approval ratings collapsed and never recovered, as you can see on that chart. So that's the short-term economic reality, which has led Biden to be rated so poorly overall and specifically poorly on his stewardship of the economy. And it stands in stark contrast to a medium to long-term economic vision, which I have to say is actually the best of any president of my lifetime. Now you might say that's a low bar. True, you might say there is way more that needs to be done. Also true. But the long-term Bidenomics vision represents an important and notable shift away from the market-obsessed tenants of 40 years of neoliberalism, which have decimated our industrial capacity along with our once-storied middle class. To put it simply, Biden and his team have rejected the Reagan, Clinton, Bush, Obama consensus on free trade and have returned to a direct industrial policy that harkens back to the New Deal era or even to the Hamiltonian system, which helped to build our nation in the first place. The Infrastructure Act is helping to build critical infrastructure, which was desperately needed, long neglected. The CHIPS Act prioritizes domestic industrial development of semiconductors, absolutely essential industry. The very poorly named Inflation Reduction Act is the most ambitious piece of Biden industrial policy, which seeks to get America wholeheartedly into the game of green tech investment, an industry which will define the future and an area where China has long been destroying us through their own large investments and industrial policy. At the same time, the Biden administration has also broken with 40 years of consensus on corporate power and monopolies, bringing in a group of true renegades to restore trust busting and make it relevant again in the modern era. There is hardly an industry where a small group of giant corporations haven't taken over with devastating consequences for small businesses, workers, farmers, and consumers, to name a few groups. So this work is really essential. And while, of course, I want them to go further and vehemently oppose the Biden admin's intervention in the rail workers' potential strike. This is the first administration in my life that has taken significant steps to strengthen union power. The Biden National Labor Relations Board has been a game changer for workers trying to organize, 
from decisions in favor of Starbucks workers to the recent earthquake ruling that will force union busters to immediately recognize and bargain with workers, real safe steps have been taken that could lead to a resurgence of labor, which to me is the single most important thing you could do to improve the lot of American workers. To underscore just how important this really is, just take a look at this chart. Killing unions killed the middle class. It is really that simple. Now, as I've said before, the Biden NLRB alone is reason to choose Biden over Trump if your priority is the fate of the American working class. But none of that positive possible future for Bidenomics is helping people today, right now. Nor will it be helping them when they go to cast their ballots a year from now. The Biden team screwed themselves by abandoning an immediate agenda of material progress for debt-laden Americans. That's the real problem for him. After all, Biden's been old this whole time. He was old when he won the Democratic primary. He was old when he beat Trump. He was old at the beginning of his term when his approval rating was soaring. And he's still faring better in the polls than his much younger vice president, Kamala Harris. What has changed isn't Biden being old. It's the credit card balances, the dwindling bank accounts, and increasingly hopeless housing situation that has turned what should be a gimme reelect into grave peril. And Sagar, that's sort of my overall view. Of hey guys, if you want to see what I had to say to Crystal's monologue, not just this one, all of them going back to the very beginning, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com.